Before we begin this part of the video, you will hear background noises that are out of my control because, oh, it's almost like I live in a house full of people. So, Transformers, a powerhouse of a franchise that's continually growing and evolving with fantastic TV shows, incredible comics, action-packed ultra-violent movies, the greatest of video games, and of course, the piles and piles of toys. It never stops. It's certainly something that's been in my life for over 20 years and I can't think of a time without the robots in disguise. My earliest memory being Transformers Cybertron. Specifically the episode where Galvatron Starscream makes all the Decepticons as gigantic as he was. Being a kid, you never have any clue of what you brought yourself into. Cybertron may have been the small crack in the dam, but the 2007 movie was what broke the entire thing. I had almost everything to do with this movie. The figures, an Optimus computer thingy, the stock bumblebee, the PSP game, and the DVD. It only grew from there with the sequels and of course, reboot. Yes, a reboot. I'm not here to talk about the movies because as much as I adore them, G1 is the center of everything. I wouldn't be the fan that I am today without G1 and well, nobody would be a fan without G1. But this is my video, so it's about me. As much as it's the most dominant in all the toy lines, it's what sells and gets us stuff like Armada Optimus, or Tidal Wave, or Magmatron, or Concept Series Megatron, or Gamer Edition for both its hits and misses. I could keep going. Essentially what I'm getting at is, is that I love Transformers no matter what shape it takes. Well, not every shape. The gratuitous violence of the Bayverse. The grunginess of the war for Cybertron games. The beauty of light piping. The genius of blast effects. Etc. Etc. Today's review is the encapsulation of 40 years. One of my grails, grail. you could say. It's not the full package, but it's the essentials. And not $500. You know, it wouldn't be an off-hand reviews video without the classic fridge going off while I'm filming. Transformers Masterpiece MP44S Optimus Prime is the bestest way for me to get this figure. I missed the original release due to being in high school and what parent is going to buy their teenager a $500 toy? When this guy was revealed I knew I wasn't going to miss him the second time and well, here he is. Also this is definitely my preferred color set for a traditional Optimus Prime because the animation colors just kind of weird me out on this figure. This Optimus being based off the original 1984 toy to coincide with the MP36 Megatron they did in toy colors. Driving the point home are these stickers to replicate the same details on the original but I opted out from putting any on because I think he looks fine without them and makes him a weird hybrid of the animation model and original toy. The only reason why there's one Autobot logo missing, it's because I put it on Kingdom Ultra Magnus, who famously has no Autobot logo on his right shoulder. With not much else for setup, the accessories Optimus comes with isn't the whole package like the original release that jacks up the price. Plus, I barely have any space for another trailer, especially one that would have been bigger than each one that I currently have. Starting off with the iconic Ion Blaster. It looks as it should and is amazingly fully sculpted. If there's one thing, Optimus's right hand barely holds on to it. The tab refuses to lock in, but I just have the fingers be what tightens the grip. No issues on the left hand, fortunately. The Ion Blaster does have weapon storage. First, you gotta fold it up, and you have two choices. There are two tabs on each side of the clip, and you can tab it in on either side of his backpack, or, and preferably, you fold out this little section of his Autobot butt, and with this open side of the blaster, you slide it in, and voila! We're not done with the blaster just yet. Next up is a blast effect that is assumingly animation accurate since SS86 Prime has them too. It looks neat, don't get me wrong, but it looks like a popsicle. Now that you have the blaster folded away, how is Optimus gonna protect himself? Glad you asked because he also comes with his Energon Axe. To put it on, you gotta remove either hand and put it in the hand's place. Too bad you have a random hand lying around now. The fridge just stopped. I'm so glad that SS86 Optimus rectifies that issue by pulling an 86 hot rod. If you think your life is useless, at least it's not as useless as the stand adapter I can't even use. If you think it's more useless than that, just know there's so much more to this life that'll make it worthwhile. It may not be just plastic robots, but it could be your friends, your family, your community. Don't lose sight of the people that care for you. You got this.
last accessory without talking about sculpt. Optimus's head sculpt is certainly Optimus Prime. Classically boxy with established antenna, head crest, and mouth plate. Most notably is the yellow eyes to evoke the original 1984 toy. Or throw that all away for a more animation inspired head by yanking off the head and replacing it. This is also an Optimus head, but a lot more rounder. Softer details than the harsh angles. Look, it's not bad, but it's just not for me. It's boxy or nothing at all. As for everything else, it's pretty standard G1 Optimus fare. The window pecs that open to reveal a matrix chamber. Oh shit, I forgot. Optimus also comes with the matrix of leadership. I tell you, I forget about them if they're in the chests of these guys. Originally in the script when talking about the matrix, it says it's made of, I'm guessing, die cast metal because it has a bit of heft. But I just pulled out of the chest and closed my hand to a fist with the matrix in my hand and I felt coldness. So it's totally made out of die cast metal, just painted with the metallic bronze. Well, the bronze is metallic. I was going to say orange, but no, that's totally bronze. And then the blue paint in the middle. So you get the matrix. You know what the matrix looks like? Anyways, the sculpt is pretty sweet with its simplicity since Masterpiece has gone closer and closer to animation accuracy with each new release. The panel lines from it being able to transform is what seals the deal that this is a robot with moving parts since, well, he is one. The small die cast in his person, which honestly I don't know where they are, they, they're probably like in his legs and his chest. So. Well, it's pretty neat and it makes sense. Taking it to the back, and while not as crazy sculpted as the front, it's the little subtleties like the backpack that isn't that bad, the thighs with the triangles and lines, and the calves. The paint is nicely applied even though there's not much as far as I can tell. Maybe in the biceps that I'm glad has the silver lines to once again evoke the original 1984 toy. Also because of these paint scratches on his abdomen. All right, so you know what time it is. It's time to do the articulation for MP44. And I guess a little disclaimer, which I didn't mention in the last video because I forgot. It's because we got the fan going because it's hot. Unfortunately, we are not in the fall, even though this video comes out in September. So it's probably September when you're watching this. And it's August when I'm filming this. So uh, that's... That's why we've got the fan on. Hopefully it's a lot cooler by the time this video actually comes out so that the video after this one, we don't have the fan on, but we will see. So let's get started. This may be a long one also because this figure, well, I mean, look how big he is. Have you noticed how big he is throughout the entire video? So the head's on a ball joint can look all the way up. Well, that far up, I mean. You can kind of like bear, he doesn't know, he doesn't look down at all. Then you got the head tilt, cuts on a ball joint. Of course, you can turn on the head all the way around. Uh, the neck, you can hinge up only slightly if you want him to look down, like if you really, really want him to look down. Otherwise, you just, that looks ridiculous. Well, I guess that could work if you're like doing like certain angles, but yeah. Next, you got the arm, they go all the way around and they are ratcheted. It's not hard ratchet, it's more like a soft ratchet, kind of, like kind of soft, but it's definitely like there, you can, it's probably very audible. Next, the arm goes all the way out, but you have to like click it out. Like, when you, like I don't know if that was obvious, but like, so like, you can bring the arm out. This is, this is how far it goes naturally. And then you gotta click it one more if you want it all the way, which is very interesting. Honestly, don't know how that works. It's probably like some internal stuff, even though you're just looking at, or maybe it's just like the, actually, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. Next, we get the bicep swivel, which is not blocked by anything. So that's pretty neat. The elbows, I um, said knees. Again, I don't know what my problem is. I always get the two mixed up for some reason whenever I do these, but the elbow is only a single bend, but it goes more than 90, which is pretty sweet. Next, you got a wrist swivel, which is pretty neat. Next, you got the hands going inward, probably so you could do like the matrix thing, but I honestly, I don't, I don't really do that. And then the fingers are articulated, so you got the thumb, then you got one hinge here for the pointer finger, and then you got one at the knuckle, and then it's the same for the other three, except these three are put together, like they're glued, glued, let's say glued, they're molded together. So they got the same amount of articulation. Hold on, his arm's coming undone. 
but they have the same articulation where it's on the from the base of the finger to the knuckles so you could undo like the like the okay hand signal or honestly I don't know what you could do with the other three fingers and then uh, another joint in the arms that you could you have a butterfly joint but when you have it inward when you well ugh, when you have it inside the body you could only do it so far but then you could also extend it out even more so you get for uh, forward butterfly range so you could have him do that thing he did in the 86 movie to Megatron which pretty sure the commander class 86 figure takes from this figure at least when they were engineering it I'm guessing at least because that figure does look a lot like mp44 but like smaller you could see he barely has a waist level but that's where you're wrong because you unclick it there and now he has an app crunch so yeah app crunch doesn't go that deep but it doesn't really need to and from there you get the waist swivel unlocked and you could use it which is pretty sweet I'm not too crazy about it because usually most of the time I have it locked in for stability so now we move down a little bit so the side skirts the side ones can open up so you can get a full spread a full splits which is pretty sweet the usual full splits is always pretty nice then the butt plates can open up so that you could have the legs go that far back which is pretty sweet it seems like that's the only descriptive word I have so then the front skirts uh, they are not hinged they're more like a spring system I think I'm not too sure they certainly feel that way so like when you bring the leg forward they kind of auto morph out into the skirt so you can get that far of a kick the next, you got a thigh swivel. It's not 360, but it doesn't really have to be. Then you got the knees, which are both ratcheted in here and in here. Um, strangely, on this leg, I guess I must have done something to this knee or it came that way where I blew out the spring because it doesn't make any noises when I move it. It just moves like a friction joint. Then you get to the, what the knee's supposed to actually be like where it clicks here and then it clicks here so you get a full knee like that pretty sweet and last but not least you get to the feet where they can hinge forward and back because they are rat they are ratcheted ratcheted forward and back then you got super crazy ankle tilt the next you got the toe bend which it's like very subtle but yeah there you go a toe bend which also carries the heel with it so that's pretty much it for the articulation for mp44 super articulated uh kind of sucks about this knee but it is what it is There's nothing i can do about it because i didn't build this toy in a factory like the people in the factory did the articulation is very expressive you can accomplish the iconic poses from the expansive 40 years or in stoicism or to put them in pretty mundane situations. Optimus is truly an all-rounder. Okay, time for the thing I've been dreading the most and that is the transformation for MP44. The whole thing is, this guy's gonna take a while because he has a lot of moving parts. If you want to skip ahead to just the truck mode, it's all fine by me because this guy, there's a lot, a lot going on. To the point that I'm not gonna go over the entire transformation. So uh, let's get started. There's a part of me that really wants to rush this, but I know I can't, cause then I'm gonna fuck something up so bad. So um, please be patient with me. If you do not like watching these, this is going to be a nightmare for you. But if you, I'm not stopping you, just skipping straight to the truck mode. So, here we go. Start with the arms. First, what you want to do is undo these panels, fold them in. Then make sure you rotate the hand the other way. Otherwise it'll, things won't line up properly. Then you take this panel and you fold it all the way in. So the hands inside and then panels like that. Next, what you want to do is take the bicep, 
open this panel. Then you want to bring it, swivel the arm forward, but you can't push it in because you need to move the smokestack first. Then you can push it in, and there you go. Then you want to bring out this whole entire assembly and make sure that the elbows are bent also at 90 degrees. Now that we've done one side, it's time to do the other side. All right, there's the other side. So now let's do the torso, which is where all good majority of the moving parts are, the other being the legs, but we're not doing the legs just yet because well, it makes more sense to do them last. So what we want to do now is open up the chest, untab this backpack also, and then fold in this panel. Fold in these little parts, which are on a double hinge. Now we go over here, grab the matrix chamber, and then from here we want to undo the entire assembly. So that means basically doing the whole ab crunch thing, which will then unlodge all of this. Make sure you don't actually have this part out, the part that activates the um, ab crunch, because you don't really need that for the truck. So instead you just need all this. So next up, make sure we get the arms out of the way. You, these panels are already starting to droop down, so that means we are going to do them next. And there, I randomly just grabbed, uh, I randomly got an accent from saying we gotta bring those down. Can you tell I'm kind of nervous about this? This is what happens when you do this live with no script. So next, okay. Undo that, which will then provide you some room to bring this panel down. This whole, well, not panel, this whole assembly down. Bring these parts down, because this is where I was before I fucked up. So, obviously, you're not going to see me the fuck up, but I did fuck up. So, then you bring out, push these panels out and swivel them, as you saw from the other side. And then bring out these assemblies with the wheels and push them forward so they. I guess they lock in, I don't know. Yeah, they lock in. So also make sure in order for this to like actually like lock in like these parts, gotta have the matrix chamber down. Okay, I'm realizing, okay. So we're gonna have to, okay, we're gonna have to pause here on this part right here, bring the head up, the whole assembly, then grab the whole front of the truck section, this entire section, which I'll just, fully fold out just to make things a little bit easier I don't know if you can fully see everything okay well, before you push in the head you see this little panel in front of his face or in front of his neck make sure push that up to as far as it'll go and there we go that's all the way so now from there just leave that all up leave it like this bring down the matrix chamber oh, wait hold on Hold on a second. Okay. So. Okay, there we go. Now we can do this. Because these parts tab in to the matrix chamber. You see the two tabs in front, like right before the, or right after the arrow. Then there's two tabs right here. Then it'll tab in together. And now we can bring this forward. Well, hold on, not yet, actually. We gotta do the whole, this whole front thing. So the swivel, the window pecs, bring out these little parts, bring them down, like that. Next, now we're gonna grab this entire assembly where the head is attached, and we're gonna just push it in all the way. Like that, there we go. Next, you can fold these down, which reveals the whole entire front of the truck. Also, you want to make sure you have kind of the windows closed already. Hold on, now I got to do it because I'm not leading by example. Okay, so you have it like this. And you push this all the way down. And there you go. Now you're starting to make something. Make sure you fully have it in. Bring out that this little top panel, there you go. And then bring out these little panels, which are like the, on his back. And then you could tab this in, the backpack, make sure it's already like that. Now you can bring this forward and lock it into the crotch with this blue piece. 
this blue piece right here. And you can lock into the crotch right there. And then from here, you could bring the arms in finally. And uh, that's the front of the truck all done. Hold on, I just gotta line it up. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a quick film break because holy fuck, this is kind of a pain in the butt to do. Enjoy the Gurwak truck. Okay, continuing where we left off, got the Gurwak truck. So, now we gotta do the legs, which is probably easier to film. I'm not too sure, I've never filmed transforming this guy. Make sure you take the side panels and fold them in, like this. And the back panels, you can just do that. And also this little, the panel that also is, doubles as the weapon storage. Make sure you have that out as well, because it reveals this tab right here, which is very crucial for the transformation, especially for the legs. And the legs are also quite panel-y, kind of. Uh, maybe as panel-y as maybe like this whole top half. Let's do the legs. So, make sure you bring the leg all the way back. This is why it can go all the way back for the articulation. Well, actually not yet. I'm not gonna do that just yet. We gotta work on the legs. We're gonna start with the foot. So, bring the heel in and make sure you swivel it out. And then you push it in all the way. So now you have a back of a truck. So, that's good from there. Now, open this up. Next. You want to open up this part of the leg, which reveals um, sandwiching, like a lot of sandwiching there. You could untab this gas tank, the robot mode gas tank, and then just have it hang out. So you grab this panel where my finger is and then fold it, where it kind of looks like uh, the barrel or like a rifle or something. And then it doesn't really show it that well because you just showed this front. So from swiveling this, you see this two, this back whole thing, so when you swivel it, it undoes it. So you can then fully extend out this section if you want. And then you leave it like that, you, like you have it like that, and then you do that. And then you can swivel this inward. So then make sure you could have it like that. Hopefully that's pretty clear, because if not, I'm going to cry. So um, then you see this panel where the gas tank is, and you can flip, put it. You can undo it, put it straight, and then you could put the gas tank like that, which is how it'll be in the back. So next up, you're gonna bring, no, no, no. You can come to this side. You're gonna double hinge that back into position, well, not back, into this position, which will then, you could, this whole panel, like you can see it's like a whole like, scaffolding I guess I don't know that's the best way I could think of you could bring it in all the way then bring down this panel well, actually before that there's this little panel right here like with web not web lines like lines on it make sure you push it in obviously then make sure you and then uh, so what's gonna happen here is that there's a tab right here right there and it's gonna tab into right there so then you bring it in, make sure you line it up. And okay, we got it lined up. Now this part, this panel, which with this folded thing, you wanna bring it down and then turn the trailer hitch around. And then you can do this, bring this in and tab it in. And then bring this forward like that. Oh God. Okay, this is like here's a problem like with the knee this is like it's like the knees kind of fucked up but like actually hold on hold on a minute never mind so that's one half um i have an idea i'm gonna do these panels after i do the other leg so let's do the other leg now give me a sec okay here's a part i forgot to show when i did the first half of the leg so there's this little part right here Make sure you slide it in like, I don't know how obvious it is. Let me separate, separate this part. So I don't know if you can see, there's like a, there's like a little panel here that's like extended out. Let me see, I get good lighting. Basically you just push it in and it should smoothen it out. 
and uh, that's pretty much it. Honestly, this is something I never noticed even when I first got this guy. Uh, I don't even know how many months ago. But yeah, I barely noticed this little moving part. You can probably see it now because I'm moving it. I didn't notice it till like maybe like two weeks ago since filming. So, um, sure shows uh, how in depth I look at these toys. So, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, and now that the legs are joined together as the truck bed, now it's time to finish this off with the front of the truck. Basically, you swivel this out all the way. Make, well, actually, before you do that, make sure this panel is folded down all the way. Then you can swivel this around, which will then create the stairs thing. And the fridge just went off. Great. So, swiping it around. Um, you want to turn this gas tank around, like swivel it around. I said swivel. Okay, whatever. Well, I guess that's as far as it goes. And then, make sure you also, you just fold out the entire truck, front of the truck as well. Easier said than done with one hand. Because some double hinge. So, I guess that's what creates the issue. Then you swivel this around, and then you can bring this forward. Creating this whole half side of the truck. Take this blue panel, fold it out. Then... Oh my god. Then you want to bring it in all the way. And there's an issue that I will discuss in a second. So after we do the other side, which is same old, same old. I'm not going to skip it because I mean it's like pretty quick. So we'll surround and do this double hinge. So we'll, or, yeah, so we'll that down. Make sure this blue panel, this blue panel behind the, this little red stair thing is folded straight ahead. And you can bring that forward. Then swivel this around, bring this around, swivel it again. Then use all the double hinges and all that crap. Make sure you line it up properly so that this blue panel is behind the... By, I guess this part, like, so that they're behind the panel that goes right here on robot mode, if you remember. Then you want to tab it in there. Tab it in. And all that stuff. line it up and then you just keep going for it push it in all the way and uh, you think that's pretty much it but nope there's one more step you gotta fold out the mirrors on the doors and there you go now you got a full truck definitely very very in-depth of a transformation because it's well it's a masterpiece figure what's the big deal what's my issue so it's uh these panels actually they don't go in all the way and because of well this well the problem stems from is this shoulder obviously you can see there's a big gas gap right there and then you push it in you go to push it in and it just fights you well it doesn't fight you it just refuses to go in i don't know what's going on i've keep looking over and over but everything's lined up properly i just don't know what's going on in here that's allowing this to like it just doesn't work you can even hear all the the plastic coming together me trying to do it just refuses so because of that it's these when you tab these in these kind of don't really line up as you can see here's a good example of them not lining up because of i'm assuming the shoulder because even here there's a little tiny gap but i think this might be in regular i'm not too sure but yeah so always whenever i transform this guy it's always pushing in these arms see if they can go in but nope nothing so uh yeah that's pretty much it for the transformation i do not blame you if you skipped to this part of me finishing this off so uh let's talk about that truck now so it's been almost exactly two years since i last sat in this corner optimus prime's flat nose truck mode is iconic the process may take a bit to do but it is certainly worth it when handling this guy, it really feels my crave for a complex transformation. Masterpiece definitely delivers if you want a long, complex process. Once you're in truck mode, there are some cool things you can do. First off is weapon storage, and only one of the two options is available here of the slider system. As for the rest, since I don't have the trailer, off to the tray they go. The doors of the truck also open for many figures I don't have. Oh, it's so nice to not have many figures that destroy themselves so easily by just moving the arm.
The truck rolls extremely well, not to the point he'll keep on going and fall off the table, but good enough. Also, they are rubber tires, because look, I just yanked it off. So, I guess that's neat. Um, wow, that's actually hard to put back on. Never mind. I don't do comparisons of vehicle mode anymore, besides earlier in this video, <laughs> because it's a bit redundant, but next to the 1984 original, you can see the direct correlation, if you couldn't tell already. Overall, the truck mode is sweet. The truck bed may have obvious robot bits, but what figure doesn't? I mean, yeah, it's masterpiece. They could have probably figured something else out, but remember, they have to adhere to budgets. Yes, even at such a high price tag of masterpiece. I will never understand the criticism that for the price point something is means they could have done something that, yes, would make a figure perfect, but it's literally the smallest things like hollow bits. I just don't get it. That is the review for Transformers Masterpiece MP44S Optimus Prime. Does he live up to the status I originally put him in when he first released? I certainly think so. He accomplishes what he sets out to do. Be the definitive high-end figure of G1 Optimus Prime that does the bread and butter. At least for the time being and not counting third party because I have no idea. Whether you want animation colors or toy colors or now, Shattered Glass is up to you. And it was at this moment when I realized that I forgot about the Black Convoy repaint. But if you want a version of this mold, this is certainly my recommendation as it's not as expensive as the original and is still in classic colors if you don't want variants. Shattered Glass is if you want something that's really out there, but at the time of recording and whenever I wrote the script, it was only on pre-order or still is on pre-order but it's sold out on hasbro pulse yes i pre-ordered one if that's what you're wondering the fridge just went off but we're going to power through this transformers is something that will continue to be a presence in my life as it has been since about 2006 i'm extremely glad to have updated figures of my childhood favorites and i'm extremely optimistic for what's to come for the future of the robots in disguise Maybe it'll be something that is passed on to the future generations of my family, but I won't know till that bridge is crossed. It's definitely sweet that more people are brought into this madness by the day. Anyways, that is another video in the books. THE video of 2024 in the books. I'll see you in the next video, whatever and whenever it is, as I've said in the previous videos. Because making videos is an interesting hobby after all. I just feel the Insecticons aren't in there. Who's gonna notice? Well, at least just somebody will notice. Like, hey, where are the Insecticons? Oh, they went on a business trip. Badass, it's right. And yes, I did pre-order that Studio Series Bumblebee.